Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to play with a supply that I've kind of been collecting and haven't really been using, and those would be Flamingo inspired products. It's kind of crazy. Not only do I have one Flamingo set, I've got two, three, four Flamingo sets. I've got Flamingo washi tape, I've got Flamingo brads and Flamingo clips, and I haven't used any of them, so I decided it was time to stop collecting and uh, play with these supplies. Um, this is the first set I got, and it looks really bad because I haven't even used it yet, but I accidentally um, stuck the carrier sheet on the wrong way, and it picked up all kinds of black from the printed sheet, so I'm hoping that these still take ink all right. Um, this was a fun one. I actually did stamp this up and never made anything with it. This was fun, a fun rubberneck one. This is one from Hero Arts. I'll link all these up below. And this one is from Local King that I got at a stamp show. So these are all gorgeous sets. I could see why I grabbed them, but it's kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to use them. I also thought it'd be fun to use some bleeding tissue paper. And I used to use this a lot in my watercolor paintings, especially whimsical fairy type paintings. But, um, but I haven't really used them, used it in a long time. It's very inexpensive. I think this set was probably around five dollars for twenty sheets. And what I did was I cut a piece and um, just like I, I cut a, cut through all the the colors. And then I went over my die cut machine and just cut out some hearts and circles because I thought flamingos might be fun for Valentine's card um, or for some other just general greetings. So uh, what I have here is four pieces of watercolor paper or Bristol border cardstock. It doesn't really matter, but because I'm going to be using quite a bit of water, I decided I would use. Use, um, some Bristol cardstock here and I cut it into quarters so it was a 9 by 12 sheet of paper and I cut it in quarters actually I'll turn it this way so it fits in the camera a little bit better and now I am going to arrange some of these cutouts here um, I want to use some kind of nice colors I'm gonna do some overlapping here and there I might tuck smaller sheets under bigger sheets just because I want when I wet this, the color is going to start to bleed and whatever is touching the paper is going to be a little bit more pronounced. Um, I thought it'd be kind of fun to have some circles, kind of might be kind of a fun birthday card because it would look kind of like confetti. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use the dark colors or just more of the pastel ones. I think I'll take out the browns and blacks. Um, but I'm just going to arrange all of this onto my paper. I have a lot of pieces left over, so I just moved them aside so they wouldn't get hit by the spray. And I'm going to soak these with water. And I'm just using a big kind of garden sprayer so I can saturate these. Um, I have no idea how much is going to transfer. I overlap some shapes because I don't know what sort of effect. I'm not sure how wet or dry I want it, but um, I know I definitely want to have enough water that things will transfer. When you're spraying, try to go, like, don't squeeze the trigger too much or you could end up blowing the the tissue off because it's so light and wants to kind of flutter. It's kind of difficult to work with in that respect. Now what I'm going to do is I cut four more pieces of the cardstock and or Bristol paper and I'm going to put that down on top and I am going to put another Teflon sheet over it and then weigh it down so that um, so it can dry nice and flat and I can have a good contact between the papers so hopefully I'll get some really good transferring and I let things drip off the edge because I know I typically see the edges more than anything else when I do backgrounds um, so I'm just gonna put some Teflon on top and weigh it with some books and um, and hope for the best so we'll see you after it's all dry I set my papers aside to dry. They're being weighted down currently by a big box of dyes and um, they'll be ready by the time we're ready to put together our cards. So I thought I would start playing with this set of stamps. This is by Local King Rubber Stamp. I grab some of their sets every time I go to a stamp show because they are so easy to use and just so well designed. And I'm using the two flamingos and the monsteria leaves here. And um, so the first, the first kind of using them as they are, you've got one standing up and one looking down. Down, and I just did a little frame with the leaves. Uh, but the other day, a viewer asked me how to make your stamps reversed. How do you? Because she had a flamingo stamp that she wanted to make the flamingos kissing, and I thought, well, that's a great idea. So I tried it here, and I was really happy with the way it came out. And since this technique's a little bit different, um, I thought I would share it. So what I have here is just a little gel press um, jelly plate, and I'll tell you what, this one's pretty new, but um, the older the better. They will uh, make your ink less likely to bead. And I'll show you how to do this technique. You want to make sure you have a piece of cardstock handy so that when you're ready to stamp, you got every Thing within reach. You're going to start off with your stamp that you want to mirror and ink it up and you don't want to go overboard with the ink, just kind of ink it up with your main color. 
You don't want it puddly. And then I'm going to take a um, marker and I'm just going to make some marks kind of going with the feathers. So it will kind of give me some shading on the feathers and I'm just gonna give it a little bit on the edges of the head. I am going to take a black marker and do the legs. Just using the brush tip. This is a memento, but any uh, water-based marker is going to be fine for this. I'm going to do the beak and the eyeball. Now, don't breathe on your stamp. So typically, you breathe on your stamp here if you've been using markers and you'd stamp it on your paper. But this time, I don't want you to because you're going to make it too soupy if you do that. And then what you're going to do is just put it onto your plate like that. Give it a push. Try not to slide it. And now your stamped image is on the plate. So then you want to grab your piece of cardstock. I'm just using some smooth cardstock here. And you can kind of see where your flamingo is going to end up. Sorry if there's any glare. And then you're just going to press it and that's going to give you your image. Now I do, I have used some ink pads that seem to um, be less splotchy. I think the markers add a certain amount of splotchiness, but I don't really mind because I think it's kind of kind of cool. And then what I'm going to do, I don't even think I'm going to need to re-ink because as you can see, it's not like it puts out all the ink that you typically have on your card. I'm going to breathe on this now and stamp it down. Because <sighs> I think I have enough in there. I do. See, there was plenty of ink. Now you can see you get a, definitely a different look, but you can go in with a pale marker and you can add some color. So let me just grab this really pale pink marker. Oop, that's not as pale as I thought it was. Let me just do a little bit of shadow and I'll grab an even lighter one. And I can just fill in enough so that it looks, you know, so that it looks good. Just keep in mind different inks are going to give you different different effects. But the nice thing about this is it will make one look a little bit different so one could look a little bit more like you know not like it's their twins it'll look a little bit different. And then you can do any accents that you want. I would probably use the fine tip of the black pen so you don't get overboard like if you're um, if your plate moved at all, then you can kind of just crisp up an edge. But I think that's a really nice way to do a mirror image. I, there are mirror stamps, but I generally find my jelly, jelly plate or gel press plate works just as well. So that's how you get your flamingos down. That's how you mirror your image. And now we're going, just gonna do a little stamping and I'm gonna use these two, these three greens actually. I've got Green Apple from Hero Arts, Forever Green, and Cottage Ivy from Memento. And I'm going to start off by inking this up with my lightest color. And then I am going to add some of this darker color. This is a really pretty color. It's much prettier than what the um, than what the lid looks like. And I'm going to just build myself a frame. So you just want to stamp and vary your colors. I like these two this combination the best. I'll show you how different this looks actually on glossy cardstock. Here I did the two flamingos and um, those two colors there, they kind of, um, this is actually photo paper, they kind of um, look a little less rich on the glossy for some reason, which is kind of interesting, or the photo paper I should say. You can do some light ones on their own. I think it's nice to get some variety. Oops, I should have pressed that a little bit better. I'm hurrying because I don't want it to take forever and I want to show you all the cool techniques. And then you can do some dark ones on their own as well. Do the Cottage Ivy and then the for Forever Green. I have a piece of um, a piece of just newsprint down on my stamping mat which is just a foam mat because if you stamp and you go off the edge on the foam mat it can um, it can stay like pretty wet on there and then the next time you go to do a project and you set your cardstock down you end up uh, getting it all over the back of your cardstock. I'm just going to do the tip of one up there and that gives us a nice little border 
And then I just like to kind of play with my inks and get the rest of it kind of colored in very organically. Now something that's kind of cool, and I'll show you this on a different on a different project. I'm just going to go in, I'm going to throw in some of this this uh, kind of teal, light, very light aqua color. Make myself a little a little lagoon here. Now if you do this on the glossy cardstock before it's all dried, you can actually go in and you can wipe away like the, the where the legs would go into the water so you can like make the flamingo look like it's kind of in the water like a kind of fishing for shrimp there so I think that's kind of cool and then I gotta look at these two memento pads because one is lighter than the other I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of uh, sand under the feet because you can see the feet very clearly this is regular cardstock so it's not gonna brush away the feet if you're doing this on glossy you got to make sure that it's dry before you do that, or it's going to brush away the feet, which might actually be be something you're looking for, but it also might not. I'm going to give a little more shading with this darker sand color under the feet. And then I think it's romantic to have a sunset, <laughs> so I'm just going to pick up some ink on my finger. You could also use a stencil and a, and a blending brush, which would probably look better, but honestly, I'm going to use what I have attached to my hand. So I just tap and then I rub it in a circle and just kind of let it radiate out. I don't need no stinking blending tool. And then I can take the edge of my ink pad and I can give it the little shimmers in the water. Ooh la la, is that the most romantic flamingo um, rendezvous you've ever seen? I think it may be. And there is one of our projects all done. You can fuss with it as much as you like. I just felt like that needed a little bit more definition. And I think that's super duper cute. So uh, lots of different um, different ideas from this stamp set. And of course, there's a couple other stamps I didn't even use. But there, oh, I inked up one of my flamingos. I feel so much better about my life. <laughs> okay, we will play with some more stamps in a few minutes and eventually make some cards. Now let's have a look at the backgrounds that we made starting off in the video here. I had a couple pieces of plexiglass and some weight sitting on top of this for a couple of days and I was worried to leave it any longer because I thought they might um, mildew if they didn't like get any air in there, but they seem to be pretty dry and they're pretty flat. The tissue paper that I'm removing has some color left and also has a bit of a variegated appearance, so I think that would be really pretty to glue onto some cardstock for backgrounds as well. You end up with a ghosty impression of whatever shapes of paper you used, which I think is really interesting, and you also get a, just a, you can't really predict the results perfectly, so I love that you've got a little bit of a batik look, you've got a little bit of a watercolor look, you've got a little bit of a, a kind of a ghosty print look. And um, you know, you can save any of those tissue papers to go on other projects, and a glue stick would be plenty of adhesive to stick those tissue pe uh, paper pieces down, say that 10 times fast, on a future project if you want to. Now some of these backgrounds you'll want to cut, like I used a little uh, edge die cut here and I cut the top of this panel, and I also cut the top of the panel of the front of the card because I thought that'd be really cool. The cards I'm making today are five inch by seven inches folded. So that's a A5, I believe. I thought that would be nice since I'm going through um, all the effort with the backgrounds and stamping out all those stamps, and a lot of them are layering stamps, so they take a little time. I thought it'd be nice to have a substantial card for them. When I've done a handmade paper, I put quite a bit of adhesive on the back of the panels, even though they look pretty flat, and we did put them underneath a plexiglass and weighted them down, they're still going to want to warp a little bit. So it's just a good idea whenever you're working with either embossed panels or handmade panels. I inked the edges of the front of that card just so that scalloped detail would stand out. And that die is from Simon Says Stamp and it comes with another one as well. And I'll try to link that up for you if it's still available. This is a really great project for using up washi tape and because um, really I felt that's really about all it needs when you have you know such an elaborate stamp scene. And there you can see one of the flamingos I did from that stamp set that I showed you earlier in the video. I thought a lot of the stamping was pretty repetitive so um, you'll just see me making the cards here and you can see the different ways that I arrange the stamps but it's really nothing earth shattering. Now I got these little flamingo brads at a stamp show last year from the company Island 
Eyelet Outlet. They have a lot of really cool shaped brads and eyelets, and um, I thought that that would be just perfect. And I actually kept those brads with all my Flamingo stuff so that I would be, I would have everything ready when I went to use them. Now this background I die cut into hearts, and I use the same die cuts that I used for the tissue paper at the beginning, because I think repeating a theme is, uh, it just takes out some of the guesswork when you're doing a batch of cards, because seriously, it can, you can really get into some time <laughs> with some of these projects. Now the stamps that I'm using on this one, it was from Hampton Arts, it was a very inexpensive set, and that was the one where the, um, I had put them wrong on the backing sheet and some of the ink had transferred from the index card to the stamp so it was kind of difficult to use and layer up but I really like the way they came. I actually stamped it twice and I included um, a colored stamping and stored it with the stamp set so I'll know how to use it again. Now I'm using an old Stampin' Up! Just For You sentiment stamp to add a sentiment here and I thought it looked kind of puny just having it once so I stamped it three times and I just stuck to this uh, basic set of tropical distress ink for all the stamping I'm doing on here. I think I might pull out a black ink pad for one of them but for the most part I'm just trying to keep simple colors the same set of washi tape um, and ink and you know because I had like four stamp sets going that was a little overwhelming quite frankly washi tape makes awesome frames um, kind of like how you'd use little scraps of pattern paper I recently destashed a bunch of pattern paper that little washi tape is a flamingo design but ironically I thought the actual flamingo washi tape that I had was too flamingo y for this project but I did want to get a little bit of it in there because I actually bought an entire set of tropical washi tape so I'm like I've got to use it at least once Oh, I've got a problem, problem with washi tape. But I've, I've filled my washi tape storage completely. It's a drawer, and I have no room for any more washi tape, so no more washi tape can uh, can come home to roost until I use some up. Um, but it's fun. It's very versatile. But it, gosh, it takes a long time to use it up. So hopefully you buy tapes that you will not tire of quickly. Uh, I like having a torn edge on my projects. I know it's not for everybody. It might look a little dated, but um, I like it, especially a nice crisp white edge next to a watercolor background. I think it looks fresh. It kind of takes away the vintage deco edge and gives it a kind of a fresh Caribbean feel. And um, I just wrapped it with some novelty yarn so that I'd have this kind of cool texture on the card. I want a little bit of a frame on this flamingo, a little bit darker than what I had for washi tape, so, or on the card, so I took this brighter washi tape and just folded it around the edge and I made a little border that way. It's not perfect, but I, I like it. Um, it didn't, I, it covered too much of the leaves on the side, so I ended up just putting a little scrap on either side of, of the tape there. Now this was a fun stamp, but it's so difficult to use. Um, and I, I was glad I used it, but I've played with this before and I've actually just never really lined, liked the way I've lined it up. So I was glad I got a decent uh, impression there. And here I'm using some of those tissue paper circles. I liked how it had kind of like a batik look where the colors were um, kind of bled from one to the other. I just thought that was really pretty and just had a fun kind of party feel to it because it kind of felt like fiesta and I thought that would be really fun for um, any sort of celebration card. It could be like a birthday, it could be a retirement, it could be um, any sort of like congratulations I think. Uh, I just I just like cards like that. I did decide to go with a happy birthday and I stamped it in black because I figured that background was just a little too bold for any other color and I decided to finish it off with a couple of crown shaped brads that I've had forever. They were making memories. I think I got those when I was scrapbooking my daughters when they were like little toddlers and I still have some left over because there's so many in a package. But I really like that. I thought that came out really well. I wanted to do another card with a toward edge but I wanted to um, control the tear a little bit more so I used a ruler to tear this paper down and I did pretty much the same treatment as I did with the kissing flamingos but um, I just changed up the washi placement a bit. And here you can have a look at the cards all done. Uh, I think they're super fun and bright and um, happy and we're in the middle of winter in Maine and everything is just kind of gray or white and snowy and cold and I'm wearing my Cookie Monster bathrobe in my studio because it's freezing down here. So I just want something to warm me up and cheer me up and I hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching so much today. Give me a thumbs up before you go and until next time, happy crafting.